So I am about an hour away from my first ever public speaking event. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous as hell about it. Um, it's a lot different to this, just speaking to a camera and just speaking, you know, by yourself. I'm going to be speaking in front of a room of people that are going to be, you know, nodding and shaking their heads and looking at other people and talking and yeah, it's scary, but in a way I'm looking forward to it. So oh, let's go and have some fun. And, and, and they got bacon as well. And I know I'm always going to be fine if there's bacon in a room. So that's something. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Hi, mum. Today I'm going to be talking about five tips to unlock your website's potential. Before we get going, some disclaimers and you know just to manage expectations in the room. I'm not going to be talking about things like SEO. I'm not going to be talking about things like PPC, which is what you know, which is what I and my agency specialise in. I'm not going to be talking about things like content strategy, like blogs and email marketing. I'm not going to be talking about any of that. I'm going to be talking about the nitty gritty, the stuff under the bonnet. There will be some content bits, but not what you think. So, a bit of food for thought there. But I'll come on to them more in a little bit more detail. First, I want to give you guys a little bit of background about me, stuff that I don't usually talk about when I'm saying hello before we start. So, I've been, I'm part of that generation where I've been looking at websites and I've been going on the internet since I was about seven years old. So about six months ago. And, um, no. <laughs> Back, back in the days when you used to have dial-up and you know you, you used to you know you used to be online for an entire evening and you'd see maybe two pictures. <laughs> I've grown up with the internet. I've grown up with websites, so I know what you need to do to be successful with your website. I've grown up with it. I've been completely immersed in this digital world. However, as you mentioned earlier, the world, the technical world, the digital world is always changing. From week to week, day to day, things always change. And the habits and the best practice guidelines to create and run an effective website have changed. You know, six months ago, they were completely different, and now they are different again. Algorithms change, techniques and lead generation change. And we have to change for the times. I want to do something. Can you, uh, I'm sorry, I know you're eating. Can you all put your hands up? Everybody put your hands up. Right, just, just, just one, just one, just one hand. I'm gonna, I'm gonna join in as well. I would like you to lower your hand if you have a website for your business. You don't have a website for your business. But you have a website. Then drop your hand. Right, so there you go. You can't see their hands. Everybody's hands went up, and everybody's hands went down. There you go. Um, so basically, you all have a website that you use for your business to generate business. Yeah. Can I also? We'll do it. We'll do it differently this time. Can you put your hands up if you are not entirely 100% satisfied with the business that you're currently generating for your website? And be honest. If you're not satisfied. Yeah. Not satisfied. <laughs> yeah. You're satisfied? Happy? It's difficult for me because I don't use, it's not my website. Okay, yeah, that's fine, that's fine, that's completely understandable. Sometimes when you're running a website or, or you, you are part of a group and you have a website, you can't see exactly how much is, is going through your website. That's fine. But I think the general consensus is, is everybody wants to get a little bit more business from their website. Everybody does. Everybody's got a website these days. The problem with today's society, and consumers have got too much choice. Everybody has competition, way more than they used to have. The talent pool is richer. Everybody. I mean, from, from horse trainers, you, you've got competition. And I bet you've got a lot more competition than you would have had five, ten years ago. Everybody has competition. I mean, I'm a digital marketer. There are like a billion of us in TAME alone. So, why, why, am I, why am I talking about this? Right, I have five tips that you guys can easily implement on your websites. If you can't implement new sales, you can always speak to your web team, your web developers, and they'll know exactly how to do it as well. It's not going to be expensive. It's not going to cost you the world. These are things that you can really easily implement. 
and they will make a difference to your website. I also have some really scary stats, which are fun. So, without further ado, so I've, I've got to kind of look at this tutorial. I forgot my glasses. Right, here's, here's a terrifying stat. At most, you will have 10 and a half seconds to sell yourself to a, to a customer before they go away. You've got 10 and a half seconds from the time somebody clicks on your website or searches for your name for you to make a compelling enough reason for them to use your services or your products. Think about the things that you can do in 10 and a half seconds. I mean, Usain Bolt can barely run 100 meters in 10 and a half seconds. That's crazy, that's terrifying. The average attention span for a human being when they did tests in 2012 was we had a 12 second attention span. Now, we have an eight second attention span. That's one second less than goldfish. <laughs> what the hell? We've got too many options. We've got too many bits of technology. Our phones are constantly in our face. We have so many options. We as a species now have so many options and so little time that we're not really loyal anymore, despite the fact that humans are naturally loyal. We're, we're loyal creatures. I'm not saying that we can't create that brand loyalty. It's still there. But what we need to do is we need to ensure that the first impression of our websites and our brands are strong enough that it creates that loyalty. People want to come back. So, without further ado, here are my five tips. Really non-technical. I'm not a very technical person. I don't like to throw jargon in there. I don't like to bamboozle people with bullshit. I like to just say it like it is. Completely actionable and nonsense free. So, number one, site load speed. Now this is something that is so crazily overlooked. It is unreal. Speed is the first impression of your business before they even see your logo. If they click onto your website and it takes more than four seconds to load, you will lose 40% of your traffic. So say you generate a thousand visitors a month. If your website takes more than four seconds to load, you'll be losing 400 visitors. That's 400 potential customers. Madness. This is so important to get right. We have, this is the first impression. This is the first thing they see before they see anything else. Speed kills, or lack of speed kills in this case. Further tests, further studies have also demonstrated that 79%, 79% of all shoppers will not use your website again if the load speeds are too slow. 79%. That's mad. You might have a kick-ass killer product or services, but if the website doesn't load fast enough, people won't come back. You have to bear that in mind. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Oh, Michael, how am I going to be able to test my website speed? There are solutions that are in place. Google have recently started taking website loading speeds, and they now implement that into their algorithm. So the longer your website takes to load, the less chance it's going to have that it ranks higher. So you need to have a fast website. And that's not just on desktop. It's really on mobile now. 75% 70 of all traffic is on mobile. So you always have to think mobile first. That's mobile first, mobile first, mobile first, mobile first, mobile first. Your website has to load really quickly. There is a website that Google have which allows you to do a test on your website. It's called Test My Site. If you just go to Google and go Test My Site, it will be the first link up there. Go to it, put in your URL. URL? URL. URL. <laughs> Can't talk properly. <laughs> Within a couple of minutes, it will give you a detailed report of how long your website takes to load. Really, you want a website that takes one um, between one and four seconds. One and five is fine. It's fine. You are naturally going to be losing traffic anyway. There's always going to be drop off. Google will then. You can then request that Google email that report to you. And the reason why this is helpful is because a lot of what they tell you in this report is stuff that you'll look at and you'll go. Uh, okay, cheers. Forward it to your web developer and say, I need this to happen. And to be honest, if they were a competent web developer, they would have already built this website to be fast enough for you in today's age. The chances are, yeah, they haven't, because they're bastards. So, 
So go to test my site. Test your site. I'd be really interested to know. So what I'm going to do, right, when I post this video to the Oxfordshire Project Group, I'd love you guys to go away, test your site, and don't be afraid. Tell me how many seconds it takes to load. I'll be completely honest with you. Digital Gearbox current website takes 12 seconds to load. Yes. It's, it's, it's horrific. <laughs> I'm in the process of sorting that out, so I am practicing while I preach it. I've been on some websites that take 36 seconds to load. No one's using it. No one's going to use that website. It takes 36 seconds to load. 50% of all website visitors on mobile will stop using a website after two seconds if it doesn't load. 50%. Madness. Speed up your websites, guys. Number two, website security. Now, I'm going to mention uh, everybody's favourite four-letter word here. Well, it's not, yeah. Any guesses what that's going to be? Something with a G. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> GDPR. Oh, no. 48% of website visitors won't trust your website if it's not secure. And when I mean secure, visibly secure. It has a padlock up in the top. Has anyone noticed that padlock, that green padlock? Has anybody noticed the... If you haven't got that, you've got that Not kind of grey exclamation point. Ah, don't use this website. This is so important these days. People need to know that they're using a website that's secure and that they can trust. If you are an e-commerce website and you're selling products and you don't have that green padlock, I mean, anybody that's using your website is mad. Mad. And I'm one of them. If you're selling products, it's not No, however... The reason why it's more important these days is because Google have taken into account this security aspect and it has integrated it into their latest algorithm. So if you have a business that sells products, you need this padlock. If you are a website that sells your services offline and you're taking details, you need this padlock. If you're a blog or if you're a non-for-profit organization, you still need this padlock because it will show Google and it will demonstrate that you are a secure website and you are trustworthy. It will really impact. The way to do it is you need to purchase an SSL certificate. Now don't ask me what SSL means because I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. But basically the difference is, is if you are not secure, you are use, you, you're utilizing the HTTP element of your website. If you're secure, it's HTTPS. It's more secure, it's um, encrypted basically. An SSL certificate, if you go onto your web hosting platform, so if any of you use GoDaddy, you can purchase an SSL certificate. I think they're about 50 quid. Can you do that on WordPress? Yes, yeah absolutely. There are, um, there are loads of plugins and apps that you can use to force the HTTPS. You will still need that SSL certificate. Get it via WordPress? No, no, you'll have to get it through your, your hosting platform. So, who's your web host? Do you know? WordPress. <laughs> well, WordPress would be the platform that you use your website on, but right. you'll host it with somebody, whether that's uh, GoDaddy, like I said, or um, one of the others, you know, Heart Internet, you know. Um, if, you, if you need any help with that, let me know in, in, on the Facebook in the comments, and I'll be more than happy to, to kind of help you through that. But at the end of the day, an SSL certificate is super important. Um, get one. Um, so, and, and also you'll be GDPR compliant, essentially. Um, it is one of the factors that they look for to be compliant. And, you know, if you haven't got one, don't worry. The police aren't going to be bashing down your doors. Um, it's, you know, nobody knows actually how GDPR works still. Not even GDPR people. <laughs> like I've said before. All right, now we're going to go into, <laughs> now we're going to go into some of the more kind of website-y stuff. I've got, I've gone through the under the bonnet things. How am I doing for time, by the way? Oh, good. I, I waffle, and I'm, I think I'm doing all right, guys. Right. Ease of navigation. Right, so this is a bit more fluffy, but this is so important. All too often, I go onto a website, and I see a business try and give you more options than you really need. If you are a website, and you want to just generate that lead, you want to get that person into your database or into your email browser so you can call them and you can talk about your services. Why are you going to tell them every single thing you do? You want to initiate that conversation so you can then talk about what you do. You want to have that conversation. Having multiple services on your website is completely fine and I recommend it for SEO purposes. You want to kind of rank for the services that you do. But 
Don't have in your top nav every single thing you have ever done or do ever in the history of the world. Because people don't care. Have at most five things in your top nav. By all means, have a subheader. So you know when you hover over and then you get multiple options underneath that. That's fine. Don't have 50 million in that sub. Try and limit what you are talking about in your nav. When you say the nav, are you talking about the menu toolbar? Yes. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, the menu. And also think about how this looks on mobile as well. If you've got 85 items in your nav, people on mobile, if they hit, your, if they hit the hamburger icon, the three lines, they're going to just... They're just going to be like, no, I, I don't like that. And then they're going to leave the website. It's just giving them too many options. At the end of the day, the point I'm trying to make is by condensing your navigation options on your website, you're making it easier for people to get to your call to actions. You don't want to have your call to action say, contact me. Oh, but here's uh, 80,000 other things that you can read. You don't want people to do that because you get bored and they'll, they'll bog off. You want to have your call to action and get them to that call to action. By all means, tell a story. Tell people why you exist. What separates you from your competition? But don't, don't get in your own way. Don't give people too many options. Condense that menu. <sighs> Content. Now, this is another fuzzy one, but it's so vitally important. If I was to sit here, Yes, 60 minutes. If I was to sit here, one-on-one -on -one with every single one of you, and ask you to talk about your business to me, and let's be honest, you could talk about your business for days. It's your business, it's your pride and joy, you love it. It's your passion. Getting your passion across on your website is fine, but you have to do it in a different way. Especially what I've been talking about with people's attention spans, the eight second attention span, never forget that. You need to condense your passion, your USP, what makes your business so special, into a couple of lines. Tell a story in a couple of lines. Don't give people 100 billion paragraphs. Because on mobile, remember, people aren't, people scroll these days. The whole above the fold aspect of a website is dead. People know how to scroll. But if they're scrolling like this, They're not. They're not going to. They'll leave. So condense it. Break your messaging up. Use things like headings, header tags, bold things, bold your most important aspects, you know, bold your mission statement. Break things up. Use lists, use bullet points, use numbered lists. Don't list, you know, don't give 50 bullet points. Break it up. Do a couple, five bullet points. Why we're amazing, why we're unique. Why you should choose us above the competition. Tell a story like I said, but in today's modern age of Instagram stories, the last 10 seconds, you should be able to fit your mantra and your identity into a lot less text. And it's incredible how many websites I come across that still fall into this trap. It is a crazy thing. Another thing that not a lot of people do and they are getting better, but it's still crazy, is make sure that your contact information is visible. Like straight away, make your email address or your phone number easily findable. 44% of all website users that go onto a website, if they can't find your email address or your phone number instantly, they will leave. They want instant gratification. They want to contact you. Make sure that your information is easily discoverable. Contact forms. We all love contact forms. They look tidy, they're nice, they look professional. But consider this. When you go onto a website and you're shown a form and you see a, you see a field and you're like, why am I filling that in? How likely are you to not complete the rest of that form? Hmm. Think about what you want from your customers. Most people just want, I want to know your name, I want to know your email address, and want to know your phone number. Having something like a message field is always good because you can kind of pre-qualify them before they contact you because you know, at the end of the day we do get spam. But think about 
how, again, making it as easy as possible for people to get in contact with you. If you give them 58 fields, they will not fill it in and you will potentially lose a customer. Again, those three fields, you can then take that data and you can initiate a phone call. And in my opinion, this is just my opinion, having a phone call is a lot richer than just having somebody just drop you a message with a, I want this, I want that. Because then you can upsell. It's a lot easier. I think it's interesting. You shouldn't have um, a contact form at all if you're not going to respond to that inquiry within 24 hours. Yeah. And I have gone on websites and made inquiries variously. And sometimes they never come back to you. <laughs> yeah, it's horrific. Well, I, think, well, I automatically think uh, I, I actually, you know, when you go on a website because you want to contact that particular person, it's yeah. the most frustrating thing you can't find. Think about how much money people invest in these websites, mm. especially today. Website developers charge a fortune. It's crazy. I mean, you've rebranded. No. <laughs> if you are not doing these things, you are cutting your legs off. Yeah. You, you, you simply don't want to make that money back that you've invested. Mm. You need to, um, and, and not, not getting back to you off of an email contact form is, is an unforgivable sin these days. I mean, we were talking earlier about that brand loyalty. Well, you're not going to use them again, are you? No. They're not going back to you. No. F them. Censored. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's really the, the crux of what I'm trying to say, is um, if they're not doing it, then they're doing it wrong. You need to make sure that if people are submitting on a contact form, you either take them to a success page and you say, thank you very much for your yeah. query. We will get back to you within however long, I, 24 hours, yeah? Or send them an email, you know? So have an automated message that goes to them immediately and says, we manage their expectations. That's horrific to hear. In 2018, people are doing that. It's shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> I get really angry about stuff. Social proof is my final bit on content, right? Social proof, um, testimonials, people saying nice things, reviews. It's incredible how many people get reviews from their customers and they don't use them. We want to prove to people that are hitting our website for the first time that we provide a service or a product that is worth investing. Why wouldn't we utilize the messaging of happy customers? Integrate Google reviews, integrate Facebook reviews into your website. And give people, it doesn't have to be paragraphs, like I said, it can literally be one sentence. Digital Gearbox are amazing. They grew my business. We got a review like that the other day. It's not on the website yet. <laughs> but it will be, it will be. Um, utilize these reviews and um, people will, when they land on your website, they will see, they will have that proof right there and then. Social proof, super important. My final point is one that most people kind of go at. And it's the reason why I'm filming this. Video content. Video content is the buzzword of 2018. You're not doing video, you're not doing it right. And most people go, oh my god, I have to go to a video production agency and I have to spend a hundred gajillion pounds on producing a 30 to 60 second video. No, you really don't. You really do not. We live in the age where I'm filming this on my mobile phone. Everybody has a mobile phone, right? Bill, you got a phone? Oh yeah. Good. Is it a Nokia? Oh. Okay, but I look around and I see lots and lots of phones. You can film yourselves. I, I wish I had not here, to be honest. Just quite old. You can film yourselves. You can all do it. It's scary. It's terrifying. But if you integrate video on your website, have you ever? Everybody's heard of the picture tells a thousand words. Well, video does that even more. And people have, you know, the eight second attention spans, you know? Game of Thrones is one of my favourite TV shows. Have I read the book? No. Why would I read the book when I can see it happening on the TV and I don't I just get to sit there and vegetate? I won't read the bloody book. <laughs> That's like people these days on websites with content. They're not going to read paragraphs of content. They want to see a video. Now more than ever. 
And video is totally reusable. You can film something, you can put it on your social, you can put it in an email, you can put it on your website. It's ultimately completely reusable. Make sure it's evergreen, of course. So my point is, those testimonials that I was talking about, people saying really nice things about your business. How many people go and see their clients or have frequent interaction with their customers? Yeah, pretty much all of us. Obviously ask their permission first, don't just like, go up to them with the phone, <laughs> I need to film you. Ask their permission, and just say, I would love it if you could just give a 30 second review of my business. You'll be amazed how many people will go, yeah, is my hair looking okay? Oh, okay, let's do it. <laughs> Honestly, right, 30 seconds is all you need. And you can put that on your website as a video testimonial. You can put that on social. You can use it wherever. As long as that person doesn't turn out to be a mammoth criminal or something, you know, you can use it. Film yourself. That mission statement, that USP, what makes you special? Film yourself for 30 seconds and use it on your video and use it on your website. It doesn't matter if it's terrible. At the end of the day, you are making an effort. Well, don't make it terrible, because, you know, but just, <laughs> honestly, take this, take this for example. I can edit this down, I can reuse it in a blog, I can reuse it on social, I can put it on the website. It's such a powerful tool these days. People will click on it, you'll get a higher rate of engagement. And people, it's, it's a way of building trust. People buy from people. People don't buy from paragraphs. So yeah, the five tips on how to get more from your website. Site speed, vroom vroom. Site security, green padlock. Ease of navigation, don't put a book in your navigation menu. Content, squeeze it down, condense it, distill your message, make it powerful. And video, get your face in front of your customers and build that trust. And that, guys, is my five tips to get more business from your website. Oh. Well, that was nowhere near as bad as I was expecting it to be. And despite being beyond nervous prior, I feel really good. It went so much better than I thought it would. Um, obviously helped by the fact that I had a really um, good audience. It was small, but everybody there was just lovely. And um, it's one of the reasons why I love the Oxfordshire Project so much. Um, it's one big family and everybody's kind of got your back. Um, I feel like uh, I delivered that really well. And, um, you know, the aim of going in is if I could help one person, just one person then it would have been a success. And I, everybody, you know, the, the site speed test, everybody did it there. Um, and, and that's awesome. Um, so I, I've helped people today and I feel really good. And despite all of my pre-event stress and panic about my lack of presentation or preparation, it went so well. Bloody marvellous. Confidence levels is whew, right up there now. So I feel like uh, after that I can do anything. If you've made it to the end of this video, bloody well done. It was a half an hour talk, a lot longer than I was expecting it. Um, if you've made it to here, um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I will take this um, talk probably around and I'll do it again because I, I do feel like it's something that is very important today. And uh, yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, if you want to learn a little bit more about me and stuff that I do, um, give my YouTube channel a subscription, subscribe, give it a like. Uh, give it a share on Facebook, connect with me on Twitter, at Michael Kenny, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn, just follow me, I don't care, just do it. And uh, yeah, I look forward to, um, to talking to you all very soon. As always guys, I've been Michael Kenny, you have been awesome, my car is really hot, so I'm going to go cool down. I'll see you in the next video.